So hi guys, so this is um, my review and my thoughts on uh, the Channel 4 documentary about um, Inside Britain's dog fighting gangs. Because uh, as you know, it's a sort of topic, you know, that I feel pretty strong about with, with, you know, how I feel about animal cruelty. So yeah, we'll dive straight in. So Channel 4 it always seems to have sort of like the, the best documentaries, in my opinion anyway. You know, they all, never fail to, to grab me in and pack a punch and they're always sort of packed with like taboo subjects and stuff aren't they um, and this one is is no is no different you know um, and this one is actually part of the untold section um, so sort of like on, on channel 4's uh, demand they've got uh, a, a section that says untold and it's documentaries and um, I'll just give you a few a few examples of, of what's on there um, secret world of fight clubs um, exotic pets uh, men for sale, life as a male escort, uh, only fans got me fired, and the cost of being a YouTuber. And there's, there's loads more, there's loads, you know, there's, if you can't find something that you would enjoy on there, then I don't know, I don't know where you'd find something. Um, but anyway, it left, uh, these videos, um, they last for about 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, so some are quite small, uh, and so, some are like, you know, you know, your normal, your normal lengths. And, um... So, given the fact that, uh, like I said, the new one is is out, um, you know, on TV at the minute, uh, I thought I've definitely got to do a sort of uh, a review on that because it's something that I, I really, really, really feel strongly about. So let's uh, let's dive straight in. It was quite hard for me to watch, um, even more so because of the you know the way I feel about animal cruelty, and I don't like cruelty to any animal. But dogs, dogs are like my little sort of pet hate, you know. Um, when they're having two dogs, uh, you can see Miles in the background there. Um, it's like, oh, you know. So it was quite hard to watch. Um, and um, it's a brilliant documentary, though. Um, it really does get on the edge of the dark side of, um, of sort of, you know, what, it, what it's doing, what, what it's set out to do when this is to expose these gangs. So um, yeah, so let's let's listen. Uh, let me tell you so you can listen and see if you want to sort of go and watch it yourselves. Um, the journalist um, is sort of wanting to sort of experience dog fighting um, and sort of expose it, and uh, you know it, it, it is something that needs to be seen, but and, and open people's eyes and bring awareness to it. And and you know is it is this documentary? This is what I was thinking when I was watching it. Is this documentary going to do that? Um, is it going to achieve what it's set out to do and sort of, you know, bring it to awareness and maybe that's going to lead to people sort of knowing to, to, to report it? Or, or is it going to sort of be a case of there's going to be people watching it who sort of want to get into it um, and are going to end up getting into it after this, after watching it because it does sort of tell you exactly what sort of money is involved in it uh, so I, I, I don't know so <clears throat> first things first and the first thing that's sort of said is when you realize uh, this is one of the, what one of the gang, gang members says to the journalist uh, when you realize there's money to be made you get into it there's more money to be made than drug dealing so um, there was an interview where um, uh, the RSPCA inspector uh, and he has to keep his identity hidden Due to uh, the operation that the undercover, it, it turned out to be at that larger scale, um, it, it sort of it resulted in sort of <coughs> undercover um, big big gangsters, like I say, on a massive, massive, massive scale, um, and it span out as far as France, um, Southern Ireland, I believe, and it, it, it like I say, also it, it led to some gangsters, sort of some real gangster op. op um, operations so the safety was is from the foremost office inspector so that's why his identity sort of you know blanks out uh it goes on to say that the, under, uh, the undercover undercovered a vast amount of evidence including a video on a mobile phone and that led to it opening massive doors you know to to, to how big a big scale that this was on um and it showed fights it showed um Dog training, to, you know, training them to, to, to be fights. It showed them on treadmills. Uh, like I said, it's shown the, uh, the fights itself. It's shown equipment um, 
used to patch up the dogs. Um, it found reports uh, wrote on they have a report on each dog, uh, and it's about the history of that fight it was in, um, and it sort of found um, IV lines with needles in them that are meant for horses. And they're used for the dogs to sort of bring them round after a fight. Um, it, it stopped um, two planned uh, fights. Um, wow, it, it fucking hell. And the winning, the totals of them, them two fights that they've gone ahead would have been £8,000. Um, fucking hell, they seized 19 dogs, which were most bull breeds. The match reports, like I said, for each fight, because uh, that's how organised this, this gang gets. Or what's rather, and it said things like uh, dog one. I think I think that dog was called um, Pella, I believe. Uh, the fight lasted 25 minutes. It sustained a broken leg, if not two. Uh, lasted like uh, some some fights. It said lasted well over a minute, over you know an hour. And um, the dog actually lost the fight, but it didn't die there. It, it died further later on in time, not long after. Something to do with with it, some injury in his, his in his stomach. Um, I mean, this, this dog dog fighting was banned since eighteen thirty five, and it's if convicted, you will face you face up to five years in prison. I think that is nothing. I mean, I, I'm a member of a group in in, a, in Facebook um, regarding animal cruelty. And it, you know, it, it brings up. I sometimes share them and post them on it. They don't actually do that well on it, but on TikTok, especially on Miles's page, they boom up. And uh, I, you know, I kind of spread awareness of them. And they all get suspended sentences, but the judge in front of them who's handed that sentence out can give them up to five years. So I, oh God, it, it just so 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 gets that gets me really really mad. And but still still now every day this is happening dog fights is happening and it's on a massive massive rise and since 2000 um sorry since 2020 there's been 2000 reports of it um he also goes and meets some males um with what um refers to as the rhinoceros dog he says he refers to this dog as a rhinoceros it's like absolutely fucking massive and he says to me, what the hell do you feed it on? And I never, I'm so grateful that there is a fence right here. You know, it's, it, it's huge. Um, and he goes on to sort of meet this, this dog training trainer. Um, and he says, uh, the trainer says to him, um, you get about four or five days notice before a fight is happening. And that's when, you know, you've got the time, <clears throat> you've got to sort of get it ready. So in the four to five days, you've got to get it fight ready. Uh, obviously, it's been trained to be a fighting dog, um, you know, with this trainer, but it sort of goes for a little bit of a more intense, intense sort of four days, really. Um, sometimes the strike, the trainer said they starve the dog because it looks better. That one, that one kind of went over me. It's a fucking stupid reason, if you ask me. Um, but they go on to tell him that the the bets can be anything from a thousand to eighty thousand pound. Um, with anything from 10 to 100 people there, so you do the fucking maths on that one. Uh, the trainer says uh, that they love all their dogs. Funny way of fucking showing it, I mean, love all the dogs, I don't think they love them like I love my and you love your dog who's sat next to you now. Um, when asked sort of how many dogs the trainer had, had lost, <coughs> excuse me, excuse <coughs> me, uh, the answer was 50, but then they go on to sort of say, well, that is over 20 years. I mean, even so, you know, bloody hell, what things. Um, then the journalist asked, sort of, how did you get into it? You know, why don't you just stop what, stop it? And um, <clears throat> and apparently they was approached by a, a member of the of this dog fighting gang and said, you know, we want you to train, train a dog to fight to be a fright standard. And apparently this gang, um, they believed that the dog, they wanted the dog trained on a level up to bite people. Um, and that, they believed that that way, if it could do that, attack people, it would win, win its fight. And this trainer saying it doesn't actually work like that, you know, but they wanted that dog training like that. So um, they did, and, and it lost the fight. Now, 
so as punishment to the trainer, like, it, you know, even though they said, you know, that's not really how you go about training a dog, but hey-ho, um, they say, we want, you know, you've got to train one of your dogs. So they, they got this dog that they had sort of for years. It was like a family pet. I uh, can't remember its name. It does actually say, but anyway, they had, as punishment, they had to train that dog to fight for them to prove themselves that they could actually train dogs to a fighting standard. It's fucking bizarre. And all the dogs that they've lost are all buried on this on this trainer's land, you know. Funny way of showing love, though, isn't it? It's uh, very, very funny. And the identity of this of this trainer is, is, again, sort of hidden. Not in a blurred out way, but they've got all black on and a balaclava. And believe this or believe this not, it is a woman. It's a woman. Which, obviously, women can be dog trainers. I get that. But there's so, there's so sort of distancing that, that, that this, this person is doing from him. You know, and like, yeah, just, just leading dogs in to die. You know, knowing that. Yeah, I just wouldn't kind of expect it from a woman, would you, really? Um, and then the journalist goes on to uh, meet an organiser, and um, that's that's his role within the sort of organisation of dog fights. And uh, he says, you know, what does your family know you do this? And he sort of like laughs nervously and sort of edges about a little bit, and uh, he, he says that they don't know. And then he's, he then he asks him, what would your family say? And and again he sort of shuffles around, laughs nervously, and says that they wouldn't like it basically. I mean, nobody sort of wants to see their son or daughter in this fucking, in, in that, short, surely they don't, anyway, surely they don't. And um, something that I found out through this documentary as well, there's sort of a new way now what they're using dog fights for, and that's um, the settling scores on the street. So it's like, if, um, you know, some rival, you've got beef with a rival gang, instead of sort of going out and like taking it out on each other, uh, stabbing each other or, you know, whatever, they're um, fighting the dogs. So one gang's dog and the rival gang's dog, they, they you know, you organise a, a meet where you let they, two dogs fight it out, basically, to the death. Um, or, or till it's, you know, it can't fight anymore, basically. Um, it's like an extreme version of fucking boxing. It, it's, it's absolutely a horrendous dog fighting, it really is. I don't know if any of you have been to any, but believe me, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... He goes and, and meets this, this kid who takes him to where uh, it's like a high-rise flat in London. And um, apparently, even though it's a high-rise flat, it's in quite a nice part of London. And um, it's done in like the basement. And you see like a, a blue door, council painted blue door with a key in it. And you see basically um, the young lad, because uh, he's already previously told him that the reason he's there is because some rival gang, the, the rival gang whose dog they're going to be fighting, um, he says that he owes him money for drugs or something, and, and this guy says, uh, basically, I'm not fucking paying it, so we've arranged for, uh, you know, two dogs to fight. And this, this dog is called Ghost, what this, this young lad's got. And it's, uh, it's a bull breed again. Lovely colour. It's like a bluish, silvery, grey colour. It's gorgeous. Sh sh you know, I'm not saying... It, obviously, it will be... It's going to have already had a bit of tough luck. But the coat on it is so shiny. Um, you know, it's not an old dog. It's 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 a youngish dog, and you know, it, it's sat there and he's holding it by the collar outside this this room. And oh God, the dog is, knows what's going to happen um, because it starts crying, whimpering. You know, making it very clear, very clear to anybody who's listening. Like, he does not want to go into this room and fight this dog. You know, he's probably never had a fight in his life. I mean, he's probably had, you know, like, you know, we all take his dogs out, don't we? And, and they all, like, you know, definitely never had a fight in his life. So, it, you see, it, it, obviously, with it being illegal, um, we can't show sort of dog fighting on TV. So, the, uh, you know, the journalist and the um, camera crew wait outside. So, about... Six minutes later, he said it was. Um, the genus is allowed in, and he takes the camera in with him, and you know, and they film around, and there's blood all over the floor, and 
All, all, the, all the people have gone and the dogs have gone. And obviously, one's either dead or extremely injured, who, whoever's dog it is. Um, so then he sort of comes out and uh, you see uh, Ghost and his owner sort of on the stairs and uh, making their way out of, of, the, of the building. And the, the guy, the young lad, is having to carry his dog. He tries to put it down and see if it'll walk once he gets out of the building, but he, it can't. Um, and, yeah, it's very, very, very badly in, injured. And the young lad even turns around to Janice and says, can you stop, stop following us now? So they go and, I don't know, maybe put him in the car, I don't know. But, but then it goes to a shop where he's talking to, to the lad. He hasn't got the dog anymore, but he's talking to the lad. And, uh, you know, he said that, didn't, you know, stood their own, went, you know, try and gave as good as it, as it could, you know, um, but Ghost sadly lost. And, Christ, it's, it's, it's mad, I don't, and the way, what he's saying is, you know, is it better that we sort of have two dogs bite? And one gets injured or dies. Or what's the alternate? The alternate is two two people are going to sort of fight it out. Two rival gangs are going to go head to head, human to human, person to person. You know, and potentially they're going to have a very injured another young lad, or or a dead young lad. It's a fucking hard one, isn't it? It's it's, it's a hard one. It really, it really is. It really is, and 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 it, it's, it's like I say, it's terrible to watch, extremely terrible to watch. Um, but it's something that kind of needs sort of needs telling, really. And um, we need to sort of bring, yeah, we do. We need we need to try and end stupid stupidity like this, you know. And and the attitude of some of the guys, you know, are, are obviously like, you know, they were born to fight. You know, that's what they raised for. Um, but. Uh, what does the guy say? His final words basically uh, it makes sense to us, and it saved a potential death, um, or, or you know, death of a young lad's life, which is a lot better, surely. Um, he says, and he'll go and get another dog, and if that dog can't do its job, then it'll end up in the same thing. Um, you don't find out what actually happened to Ghost, but I imagine, I imagine the dog died. To, to be fair, with, with its with its injuries and the fact that it fucking couldn't fucking walk. Um, so, like I said, we're having a new, a new little uh, things on the channel keep popping up and stuff, isn't it? So, that was part of um, a few uploads that I'm going to create a playlist, and it's going to be <coughs> <coughs> random reality. So, it's not going to have a permanent place on the channel sort of every week or anything like that. Uh, just gonna random uploads on, on, on documentaries that are about, uh, and I want to do a review on. If anybody wants me, uh, wants to do hear my opinion on a documentary, then just pop the name down in the comments and um, I'll, I'll do one. Or if you just think I should just watch one, because I'm always looking for new documentaries. Um, so please do so. Please like, subscribe and uh, share me. Uh, come on, get, get, you know, I'm not a bad person. You know, we've all made mistakes. Um, yeah, just subscribe. Say that subscribe. It doesn't make any difference to you, but it really does to me. Thank you.